Hello and welcome back to part four of four of this series going over the Salesforce Certified Associate exam. This section is gonna be reports and dashboards, which is gonna take up 15% of the exam. As always, I'll be going through the bullet points found on the exam guide and talking through different scenarios and questions you might encounter on the test and things you need to learn as you're entering into the Salesforce ecosystem. So let's get started. First bullet point is describe reports on Salesforce. So we're gonna be talking about different report types, uh, whether it is a tabular, matrix, summary, joined. We're gonna be talking about custom report types, as well as how to give access to reports. So you have a good understanding to, of doing this, we're gonna walk through the process of creating a free report. So we know how to create reports, we know how to look at filters, how to group, et cetera, et cetera. Now it's time to jump into a free developer org to walk through and create a few reports. So here I am just on the home page of a free developer org. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and navigate over to the reports tab. Now here's where, you know, you default to all uh, recent reports, but I want to go to these all reports and I want to look at creating reports and how I can place these in different folders and look at the different types of reports that I can make. So if I hit new report here, it's going to pop up this screen where it's going to ask me, you know, what category of report do I want to create? What I'd like to do is I would like to create just a very simple accounts report. So if I click on this accounts report, uh, it's going to ask me to go ahead and hit start report. And here is where the actual report is, is going to be edited, right? Here on the left hand side, we have several different columns or data points that we want this report to look at. I can go ahead and add columns here. Uh, for example, I can look at, uh, I always make sure that the create date is here in case I'm filtering by the create date, as well as you can add groupings here. So if I wanted to group it by the, uh, we'll say the, uh, the type, right? The type of account that it is, I can go ahead and have it here. Now you'll notice that things aren't refreshing. Uh, I can go ahead and refresh this preview so each time I want it to, it's gonna go ahead and look at these accounts or on the top right, I can have this update preview automatically to be running every time I make an edit. So these are the fields that I would like to look at. Now you'll notice here that no data is coming back, no accounts are coming back. Now I'm gonna need to look at the filters here. It's looking at, uh, look, looking for accounts that were created just in the last week. This is an old developer org, so there's a lot of old uh, accounts in here. So if I put this to all time, we'll see this populate through, right, with a few different types. So very simply, I, we need you to go into Salesforce to create reports. There's a great super badge talking about lightning reports and dashboards, highly recommend it. But you need to get very familiar with how to create reports and just the different ways that you can customize it. So for example, if I have just a ton of records coming through a report, and I don't want this many, you know, you need to look at the filters. I need to parse down the filters by, oh, we'll say, uh, let's say create a date is I can either put in a date or I can use a relative uh, date here. I'm going to say last year. Great. That's going to look at uh, accounts created in the last year. So please go through and get familiar with how to create reports. Uh, again, there's groupings that you can make here, whether it is on the row or the column, uh, as well as these filters. So make a few reports. And what I wanna do now is talk about the different types of reports that there are. Now simply put, there are typically four types of reports that you want to make in Salesforce. It's gonna be the tabular report, summary report, matrix report, and then the joined report. Now I wanna talk through what these look like because you will see scenarios where it's giving you an example of what a report looks like or what they're trying to find, whether it's by summary or whatever that might be and you need to figure out, okay, what type of report is this? So we're gonna talk about these four reports and I'm gonna show you very simply how to visualize these and keep these separate in your mind. So as I'm looking at my account report, you'll notice that I have it grouped by one thing. I'm gonna go ahead and bring the type back down here and you'll notice here that if I just have a report and I have these columns or these fields that the report's looking at, this is a tabular report. Think of tabular like a table. This is simply a data table. So it just has all of the info right here in one data table, okay? That is a tabular report. No groupings, just the data that you have here as columns. 
that's a tabular report. Now you'll notice here that what's important and difference on tabular is again, we're not grouping by anything, but we also can't have charts created out of a tabular report. You'll notice that that's grayed out here. Now I wanna look at the next layer or next level of reporting, which is gonna be a summary report. So to do that, I'm back on the edit side of my report. And what I wanna do is I want to actually add a field as a grouping. So I'm gonna take a field from the columns and add it to a grouping. I can either type it in up here or I can drop or I can drag and drop it from a column. So what I wanna do is I wanna grab from the type and put it up here in a grouping. So now that I'm grouped by something, this is now a summary report. Now I'm gonna add in just a field just so you can see the actual calculations happening. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add annual revenue here. So notice here that the annual revenue is now, if I'm gonna go ahead and hit run, it's summarizing by type. For example, I have a customer direct. And you'll notice here on the far right, I have this annual revenue summarized of all the accounts found in customer direct. This is that summary report. You're able to have one grouping on a, on a row to be able to summarize that info. Now, what is great here, something to know, is that you are able to have multiple groupings, but it has to stay on a row level. So for example, if I were to go ahead and put, uh, let's go ahead and put last activity, and I want to group also by that. This is still considered a summary report because we're only grouping by rows. We have a type grouping and a last activity grouping, but that is only on the rows, so it's still considered a summary report. Now, in order to, to go up the next layer to a matrix report, the difference here is that on a summary report, I'm only grouping by rows. Whether it's one or two fields, it's only by rows. Now, if I want a matrix report, I want to also be able to group by rows and also by columns. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move the last activity down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put rating and put it up in this column. So now I'm looking at a grouped row and a grouped column. And if I hit run here, you'll notice that I have kind of this matrix table that has the grouping up here and the grouping on the side. This is considered a matrix report, right? And I can see the details of the, the actual records down here on the bottom, but this is considered that matrix report. So again, keep in mind, matrix report is grouped by row and grouped by column. So those are the three basic there. We have the tabular report, which is grouped by nothing. It's simply a table. We have the summary report, looking at just grouping by row. And then the matrix report is grouping by row and column. And these ones, uh, we'll go through charts when we talk about dashboards in just a moment. But again, matrix and summary reports, you're able to add charts to look at this data that you have found that you've queried through this report. Now, the fourth one that I wanna talk about is a joined report. Uh, a joined report, if you see here, I'm back on the edit side of my report here, is if I hit on this drop down arrow on the top left, this is again looking at a report. I can add columns and filters from a single report type. But if I wanna add blocks of different reports and add them together to look at the data, that's called a joined report. So if I click this button here and add a joined report and hit apply, it's gonna ask me, okay, what is the next block of report that you want to look at? So here I have my current account looking at type and rating. Now I wanna add a block, which is gonna say, oh, let's add another report. So I wanna actually add opportunities here and I'm gonna add this block. And by adding this block, I've now joined those two reports. I've joined my account report with my opportunity report. And so here are my columns for, for the account block. And now here's my opportunity report looking at those. So as I went ahead and saved, this is looking at all opportunities. You'll notice here, as I hit run, we're gonna see these reports as joined, right? So for example, this is looking at the customer direct and looking at the accounts here you know, different edge communications, United Oil and Gas. And here are all of the opportunities that line up with those same accounts. And so that's how I'm able to join two reports together. You know, you might see on the test talking about being able to have different blocks of reports joined into one. 
That's known as a joined report. So now that we've talked briefly on the different report types, again, recommend you go into a free developer org, play around, create some reports, get familiar with how to create reports, how to filter reports, and the different report types, talking about tabular, matrix, summary, and joined report. Now I wanna talk about visibility on these records. So what's important to note is that any record that a user is able to see in a report are the same records that they have visibility to across the org. So for example, if we have the org-wide default settings, the sharing settings on the account as private, and we don't have any other sharing, sharing uh, rules or any role hierarchy, just it's private, right? Which means that I can only see the accounts that I own. That means that when I go to search for accounts up here in the search bar, I'm only able to see accounts that I own, as well as on reports, I'm only gonna see accounts I'm able to access. So that's very important for reports. When we talk about having access and seeing data in your org, it applies to reports as well. You're only gonna see on reports records that you have access to. Now let's talk about how to get actual access to the report itself and not the records that are on the report. So what's important is that when I go to hit edit here, now I want to save this record. I've just been running this record or this report. Now I want to hit save. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put in here a uh, new joined report, right? Because I have the opportunity block and the uh, account block. Now is I wanna actually select a folder. In Salesforce, if someone needs access to a report or you send them a report link and they click it and they don't have access to it, you don't share access on report by report basis. You share access on report folders. So for example, if I have this in a private report folder and I hit save and it's in this private folder and I go to share this with another user, they likely are not gonna be able to see this report. So again, sharing access for reports is done on the report folder level. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and go back in. I'm gonna hit properties and I'm gonna save this in a public folder. And there we go. In a public folder, most users should have access to this report if I were to send this to them. Uh, to talk a little bit about sharing report folders, if I go back to the reports column here, or if I go back to the reports tab, you'll notice here that there's this new report folder, so I can create new report folders to organize these better, as well as if I go here on the right side, I have all folders, right? And if I go here on the, the right side, I can go ahead and look at sharing different folders. So if it is a folder for particular users, I can actually share with users, roles, roles and subordinates, and public groups. Those are how you can share report folders. Again, users, roles, roles and subordinates, and public groups. That's how you can send these report folders and give access to reports within the folder. Now the different access that you can give to groups are gonna be view, edit and manage. So that's a good overview of how reports can be shared via the report folders. Again, before taking this exam, recommend you get in developer org. The best way you're gonna learn is by building. So make sure you go in there, build some reports, share different folders and see how users have access to reports in those folders and you'll feel real confident on this part of the exam. Now the second bullet point here is describe dashboards on Salesforce. So we're gonna go ahead and create a dashboard. We're gonna talk about how we can add reports, add different widgets to dashboards, the different chart types, and what a dynamic dashboard means. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and go to the column of, uh, we're gonna go to the navigation bar, we're gonna go to dashboards. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new dashboard here. I'll just call this new dashboard and I'm just gonna leave it here in the private folder for now. So here I have this grid, as you can see here. There's a grid that's gonna become my new dashboard. So in order to add reports and different charts from reports, I can go here to the widget button here, and it's gonna ask me, do I want a chart or table? Do I want text or do I want an image? Text and images are fairly new. These are really nice that we can add these to, uh, we can add these to our dashboards here, but I'm gonna add chart or table. And here's where it's gonna ask me to select a report. Here's my recent reports, here's all reports. I'm gonna go ahead and just grab this all opportunities report. And here are the different chart types. This is what you want to be familiar with. You wanna be familiar with the bar graph, both vertical and horizontal. 
you want to talk about the line grant line chart which is often looking at data week over week kind of getting some trend analysis here very important you have the different pie charts the metrics the gauge the funnel the scatter plot and then just the table itself please 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 build a dashboard put on your dashboard every single type of chart so you can get used to seeing these right so i'm going to go ahead and put in this bar chart What's great here is that I'm able to resize these widgets on the dashboard, both vertically and horizontally. So that is an important piece is you're able to resize widgets once they go on the dashboard. So let's go ahead and add a few more widgets just to show you the chart types. And so here I'm back on my dashboard and I wanna now look at different trend analysis on close dates, right? So I'm gonna edit here. I wanna actually edit the component here. And instead of grouping by the account name, I wanna group by the close date. Now you'll notice, there's just a few test uh, accounts here, but this is very important, particularly if you're looking at, you know, closed one opportunities is looking at, okay, when did, when did those happen to, to be won by the team month over month, week over week, et cetera. So line charts are very important for that trend analysis week over week. Uh, let's go ahead and add another widget in. Uh, let's go ahead and just add a little, we'll do a pie chart. Actually, let's do a gauge here. That's an important one to know, okay, what are my limits here? You know, how many records do I want to be considered in the green versus in the red versus in the yellow? And so great to know where you're measuring to goal to make sure you put your goals in here for whatever time frame you're looking at. Uh, this gauge is nice as well. So put this over here and that'll go ahead and come up here. Uh, and then lastly, I'm just going to put in a little widget. I'll put in a little text widget and say, you know, good job team. And I will go ahead and add that in. And so now here's this good job team, right? Just this little tiny uh, blurb here. So you can add different text. You can add images as well. This is important. Make sure you build a dashboard, put several different charts on it, understand when to use certain charts. A lot of good resources on Salesforce help to look at the different chart types. Um, as you build, you'll understand when do you want to visualize it in a certain way. A few other important pieces to know about dashboards is a dashboard can only have 20 components currently. Uh, that means that I can add 20 different widgets, but the second I go over to 21, it will not allow me, allow me to save that dashboard because 20 is the limit of components you can have on a dashboard. And the last two things I wanna talk about are gonna be dashboard filters and dynamic dashboard. So what's great is if I'm on a dashboard here, what I'm able to do is I'm actually able to view this dashboard not always as myself. I can view it as another person. Uh, I can let the dashboard choose the dashboard viewers choose who can view the dashboard as, right? So if I am a sales manager and I want to view it as one of my reps versus another rep, I can actually choose that myself. So this is what a dynamic dashboard means, meaning that you can change the running viewer of the dashboard so you see the data as if you were them. And so in order to do that, I need to save this dashboard in a public folder, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create a new public folder. I'm gonna say public folder. Great, because saving this in a private folder doesn't really make sense to have a dynamic runner if a dynamic user running it, if it's private, because private means only I have access to, to those reports. So here I have the ability as a dynamic dashboard to change who I'm viewing it as, right? I can view this as any user within the system. And so that is that dynamic dashboard. And the last thing I wanna talk about dashboards is that you can have dashboard filters here. So for example, if I click here on this filter button, I'm able to view and really select records based on certain criteria. Now, what is important is that you're gonna filter all of the reports by this, not just uh, reports of the object that this field may live on. So for example, if I go down to opportunities, and let me go down to opportunities here and I want to do uh, amount. I only want to look at larger amounts, right? So I could do, we're going to say uh, greater than 150,000, right? And I want to add another one. I'm going to say uh, greater than 300,000. And just like that, I can add those amounts, right? I'm going to go ahead and add that. So now if I hit save and done, I now have these different amount filters. So if I go here to 150, 
you'll notice that it went down quite a bit, right? So greater than, than 150 is at uh, 12 opportunities here total. Greater than 300,000, if it refreshes here, is only greater than five. And if I go back to all, because I have a lot of, of empty ones, it's gonna jump back up to 31. So those are dashboard filters, allowing you to filter across the reports on the dashboard. So I know that that may seem like a lot talking about reports and dashboards, but I promise the more that you get in developer org and you play around with different filters on reports, different groupings, build a dashboard and put different chart types, you'll understand the preferences of when to use certain reports and certain charts to visualize the data, to make sure your dashboard is very helpful for your team to make decisions off of, to understand the different trends that are happening at their company with their clients there. Please remember to practice all of these principles and you'll feel confident going into this portion of the exam of reports and dashboards on the Salesforce Certified Associate exam. Best of luck and I'll see you in the next one.